Taggart. Here. Jimmy Davis. Here. Patrick Fitzmorris. Here. Dave Doherty. Here. Kirk Drum. Here. Ron Randolph. Here. Carolyn Parker. Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. <clears throat> Please uh, silence all phones and, and electronic devices. If you don't like the decision of this commission, you can. Uh, we have appeal cards up here. You can you can discuss with the council. We also have speaker cards, which I've already received for tonight. That in case you want to speak about one of the cases, during the public speaking events, we'll ha we'll give ten minutes for each side and five minutes for rebuttal. Please stand for the invocation by Commissioner Randolph and the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Parker. Our Father, once again, we stand before you with bowed down head, with lifted hearts, recognizing all the blessings you bestowed in our lives, Lord. We thank you once again for your grace and mercy. Continue to allow your grace and mercy and favor to be exhibited among all each and every one of us that's in this facility and those that's connected to us. Bless our families. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless this commission, bless our parish and our government and all of our employees in a mighty way. It's in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll now, t I will now take uh, any comments or changes <clears throat> requests for the approval of the minutes from the commissioners. Commissioner Randolph. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes as printed. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Baggert. Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Baggert. Commissioner Richard. Go ahead. The only issue I have with the minutes is on the first case. It says the motion to postpone the, the case will come before us on the June 4th meeting. That case is coming before us tonight. So um, we either have an error in the minutes or the case shouldn't be heard tonight. So I just want to make that we need to correct the record. I don't know which one it is, actually. Staff? You're just going to correct the record, but we will be hearing the case tonight? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion to approve by Commissioner Randolph and a second by Commissioner Baggert. Please yeah, vote. Corrected. As corrected. Please vote. Yeah, I'm sorry. We have to go back. Indicate the case will come before the June 4th, 2019. That's what they're going to correct. It's a typo. This is just a typo? This isn't, this case is going to be heard this evening. We're talking about case number one, 1188 and 1383. But if the motion was for June and the mm -hmm. people that were here last month we're expecting it to June, then we got a problem. No, the motion is, is my microphone on? It's on. Okay. Yeah. The motion was incorrectly recorded in the minutes. All right. Well, I'll go back and look at it, but we'll go with it. All right. So we have a motion by Commissioner Randolph, a second by Commissioner Baggert with the correction. Uh, please vote. Richard, Mr. Baggert, Mr. Doherty, Drum, and Rand. Okay. Okay. The motion to approve has passed. Thank you. Staff, is there any postponement of cases tonight? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have a request for um, number one on, a, on the third page, which is PR 1712002. It's a request to postpone until the June 4th meeting. Thank you. Is that the only one? Yes. Okay. Is, is, is there somebody representing this uh, one case available to discuss why the case is being postponed to? Yes, sir. Kimberly Everett. Um, we are still in process of um, addressing some staff comments um, that we've recently got that have changed up on the landscape plan that we're revising. Okay. So it's just for the landscape? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it? All right. But thank you. Is there anybody else uh, here in, that would like to uh, postpone the case? Is there anybody here that would like to talk on not postponing the case or has a discussion? Please come up. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Your Thank name you. and address, please. Nancy Wagner, 33 Hyacinth Drive, Covington. I'm the current president of the Flowers State Civic Association. I object to the postponement of hearing this matter. Most recently, the violation was Mr. Bowers was found in violation of the rear setback and the Highway 21 overlay corridor landscaping requirements. He was told. Um, that new businesses were not to be opened until he applied for a variance at tonight's hearing. He has a history of coming to the Zoning Commission, and I have copies of the minutes and the letters sent by the Planning Department after those appearances, getting approval as long as he does what he says he's going to do. And then he doesn't do what he's been told to do. So now he's been allowed to open these businesses even though he was told he wouldn't be allowed to open them until he came to this meeting tonight and requested the variance um, he's been allowed to do that because he put up a bond for the landscaping he hasn't done the landscaping he hasn't done any of the orders that were given um, by the letters from mrs lambert um, in january of 2018 and in August of 2018. So to come in and say, well, we just have to change our landscaping and we just got notice of that is really uh, not what I would call a fully accurate statement in terms of the number of letters and times they've been told to get into compliance. This site is a disaster. There are four homeowners in Flower Estates who live at the rear of this property. Their homes have been, the backs of their yards have been flooded by the drainage problems, which have not been corrected. and one of the things they were supposed to be asking for in this, in this hearing was permission to put a detention pond in the Highway 21 overlay area. The detention pond is shown in some of their original drainage plans as what's going to keep the water from flooding the residences behind this development. But there is no pond, and it hasn't been approved to be where they say it was going to be. So that is a brief summary of many of the issues involving this site. And thank you for hearing that. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this case? Yes, sir. Uh, Leo Hemelt. I live in Flowers Estates, 86 North Dogwood Drive. I can just echo what the speaker had said. There's just a long history of noncompliance. And this has gone on not for months, but now it's stretching into years. And I think at some point, there's going to have to be some serious action done in, to, in order to request and ensure that the requirements that uh, were we put, a play, put on, on Mr. Bowers, actually he does. Okay, this, he got this building permit. He was required to do certain things, and they haven't been done. And it is an eyesore. If you drive past down 21, which is a really a beautiful corridor because you, you have that overlay system in place, and it, it has worked very, very well. And I have to compliment the planning staff, too, because they are on top of this matter right from the beginning. And I think at some point you're going to have to do something. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Any more? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Lauren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I went back, <clears throat> this case last appeared before us at the August meeting. And I went back and looked at the video, not once, but twice. A gentleman by the name of Scott Grove was here 
on behalf of the petitioner. He, he was an engineer. And there, were, there was no opposition to what was proposed by the staff, by the petitioner. When he got through with his presentation, I specifically did what I'm doing now, <laughs> ran my mouth, and I, I went over with him the importance of maintaining the integrity of the Highway 21 plan corridor overlay. And I asked him if he fully understood that. And he said that he did. And when I got finished, Mr. Randolph reiterated it. And he said, let's make sure you fully understand that. And he said that he did. And when he got through with that, Mr. Richard then asked him, are you ready to commit that you will fully comply to the requirements or the, the things that the staff said that they wanted done? And he said that he would. And with those reassurances, we approved it. I went back over there last Thursday. <clears throat> Number one, in the north corner of this property, there's a mound of dirt that's big enough to build an Eiffel Tower on. It's a huge mound of dirt. There's a concrete plant, the only one I've ever seen on Highway 21, that they built right up in the front. Biggest eyesore I've seen lately on Highway 21. It's obvious the staff's comments are dead on, that their parking island layout just won't work the way it's, it's done now. There's not, to my knowledge, from driving around and walking around, there's not as much as one, one azalea bush <laughs> been planted. There's no landscaping that's been done. So what I'm saying is there has been absolutely no compliance with the requirements that are in place. My question is, do we postpone it for one month or do we postpone it indefinitely until there's some progress made with what they should be doing to get that place put back in order? Because it, if we were presenting an award for the very worst development on 21, Highway 21 plan corridor overlay in the 22 years that I've been involved in it, this would win first prize. Okay, so I'll leave it with the commissioners with those comments. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Drum. Uh, <clears throat> since, is, is this working? Tasting, one, two, three? Okay, okay. Um, since the gentleman is not in compliance with anything, and we were told that he has businesses that are functioning out of this, now illegal place, can we, asking legal, cause him to shut down said businesses until everything is complied with? Because right now they are against the law. My mic's on. Um, you know, I'll leave it to Helen if she's aware of any specific code violations, but certainly if there are code violations, if he's operating illegally, um, we can send code enforcement out. Is he operating illegally? No, he is not operating illegally. He, but even though he hasn't complied with anything? The businesses that are currently open, the building meets the requirements. It does not meet the landscaping requirements, however, he has put up a bond in the amount of the landscaping, which is allowed in our landscaping requirements, which allowed him, by placing the bond, it allowed him to open. We're very well aware that there are a lot of discrepancies and um, that the landscape plan and the site plan has not been approved. They've submitted a landscape plan and a site plan. As you can see on the staff report, there are a lot of 
additional information and a lot of changes that have to be made, and that's the reason why they're requesting to postpone the case. We're expecting to get a revised plan within the next week or two, and we'll be able to have a hopefully a different recommendation at the next meeting. Did he have permission by us or anybody to build a concrete plant? Yes, the concrete plant that was placed on the property, it's been there for quite some time. He has, as far as I know, all the required permits from EPA and from the parish to operate it. Okay, so what we have is we were told in the military when I was in the military is we have a slicky boy, right? Excuse me. Even though he's legal, he's doing it by the skin of his teeth. Commissioner Trump, let's, uh, <clears throat> again, right now. I withdraw my last statement. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Daugherty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the uh, lady representing the developer, is she still here? Yeah. Please if come we, up. If we postpone this for one month, will the developer have all of the uh, items taken care of that are on the, the list? Yes, I believe so. Um, we have a new engineer in place um, that is revising the the site plan and working with our landscape architect. Okay, you get, if we postpone it one month, you've got approximately 30 days, rain or shine, to get this paperwork in, or, in order before it comes back to us. Yes. And if it comes back to us, like... It, we're seeing right now, mm -hmm. I can assure you, I will make a motion to postpone indefinitely. That's at least a 90-day turnaround. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more comments? There's you, no uh, motion on the floor. You, oh, commission, you, you, Commissioner Casabon. Oh. You made a motion. You made no, motion. you didn't make a motion. All right. Commissioner Daugherty makes a motion to postpone for one month. Commissioner Casabon. I'll second that. I have a second by Commissioner Casabon to postpone for one month. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. The motion for one month is approved. Thank you. I'd like to add one additional thing. It takes a few minutes. I'd like to add one additional thing. Uh, uh, the subject that Commissioner uh, Lauren was talking about, about the large amount of fill on this property, what, what's the flood zone in this area? Because I know Flowers Estates extremely well. Yeah, this situation is being addressed by okay. the engineering department. All right, great. So they are investigating it. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'd like to move up a case. Case number six. 2019-1415 ZC, existing zonings A2, proposed zonings A2 with the manufacturing housing overlay, 0.87 acres. The petitioner is, and the owner is Doreen Peacock, parcel located on the northwest corner of First Avenue and Pine Street, east of LA Highway 433, being lot 147B1, Pine Villa Subdivision, Slidell, Section 25, Township 9 South, Rains 14 East, Ward 8, District 13, Council District 13. Staff, your comments? The 2025 Future Land Use no. Plan calls for the area to be developed with a varying degrees of residential uses, including manufactured homes. Staff has no objection to the request and would like to recommend approval. Okay. Is the petitioner here tonight? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Your name and address, please. Doreen Peacock, uh, Beach Street, Lacombe. 
And you're just asking for a manufacturing housing overlay? Yes, sir. And, and w what's your intentions on the property? Well, I'm trying to sell the property, and everyone that inquires wants to know if they can put a mobile home there or a modular home or whatever. And as far as I knew, there was no <coughs> not putting anything there. Right, so, so you're asking for a manufacturing housing overlay right. in case the person wants to Right, and they know up. they have to build up. Right. That's not a problem. They just want to know what they can put there. And there's nothing on the on there's no. nothing on the property now. There was a house, but we tore it down. Okay. We right. blighted it. So is there anybody in the audience against this uh, manufacturing housing overlay? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Thank you very Commis much. Commissioner Darty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have uh, an email that was on our desk when we got here this evening from a uh, aerial fiber uh, stating opposition on this. Okay, never mind, wrong one. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I had the wrong case. Oh, okay. Well, this particular case, uh, I will uh, put a motion on the floor to approve. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Doherty. Commissioner Fitzmorris. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Fitzmorris. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. The motion to approve has passed. Thank you. Okay. Case number one, 2018, 1188 ZC, existing zonings A1, suburban district, proposed zonings A2, single family, and a PUD, planned unit development overlay and major amendment to the PUD, PUD planned unit development overlay. It's 70.9 acres. The petitioners are at Lancaster with owner Delvell Inc., Albert J. Vallon. Location is on the west side of LA Highway 59, south of Dub Park Road and Campbell Avenue. Section 25, Township 7 South, Range 11 East, Ward 4, District 5, Council District 5. Staff? We would like to hear case number 2, 2019 1383 ZC as well and suggest to vote separately since it's for the same parcel of land. Okay. Is the petition here? I'm sorry. You done? I said I would like to suggest to hear both cases at the same time, case oh, one okay. and number two. And number two? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll vote on them separately, but I'll go ahead and introduce case two as well then. <coughs> case two is 2019-1383 ZC, existing zonings A1, proposed zonings A4, acreage is 28.9 acres, petitioners is Jones Fussell and Paul J. Marone, owner is Delval Inc., Albert J. Vallon, Parcel located on the west side of LA Highway 59, Township 25, town, uh, Section 25, Township 7 South, Range 11 East, Ward 4, District 5, Council District 5. Okay, let's hear the first case first. Is the petitioner here for case number 1188ZC? Mr. Chairman, may I present the case? I can't, you know, I can't hear you. Uh, uh, may I present the case? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Is, is the microphone working? I just, I just can't. Oh, okay. Maybe the volume's low, yeah. Well, this case was in front of you last month. Um, you know, this is an addition to an existing uh, residential PUD that was uh, previously approved. And this is a request to establish the underlying zoning of A4 single family residential and also to rezone to plan unit development overlay and for a major amendment to the PUD to add 28.9 acres to the previously approved residential and commercial development. The proposed addition is located to the west of the originally approved PUD and will consist of 85 new single family residential lots. We had several issues and questions in the previous staff reports and we worked with uh, the developer and all the questions have been answered. So we would like to recommend approval of the A4 request, requested zoning change of the plan unit development overlay and also of the major amendment to the PUD. Thank you. Paul? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Paul Marone on behalf of the petitioner for both of these cases, the underlying zoning case, as well as the major amendment to the PUD and the PUD overlay. Uh, if you will recall, 
Uh, in October of last year, I appeared before you uh, and presented phase one of Cotton Creek. Uh, at that time, the project consisted of 42 lots with a portion of the property being located on the east side of the uh, Tammany Trace. Uh, all of that property was zoned HC2. The other portion of the property on the west side of the Tammany Trace was zoned A4 with a PUD overlay uh, taking in all of the property. Uh, the proposal before you this evening uh, is phase two of Cotton Creek. Uh, it's 28 acres, as Ms. Lambert noted, it's immediately west of the existing phase one. And as with phase one, this property does not abut um, any, any residents or any development of any type except for on the north end, uh, we do uh, abut an, uh, an existing industrial site. Other than that, we are surrounded by undeveloped property in all directions. Um, our request this evening is consistent with what you saw with Cotton Creek Phase 1. Phase 2, uh, unlike Phase 1, which had a commercial component, as I just mentioned, and a residential component, Phase 2 is solely residential. Uh, as a result, we're requesting an underlying zoning of A4, which is consistent and the same as what was approved uh, for Phase 1. We are also requesting the PUD to bring, uh, to be amended to bring Phase 2 under that umbrella. Uh, with regards to the plan uh, and the density, uh, the Phase 2 will afford 82 additional lots. As the staff report notes, uh, the existing maximum density, maximum net density that could be achieved would be 212 units. Uh, we're proposing a total of Phase 1 and Phase 2 of 168 units. So we're well below uh, what would be the maximum density allowable uh, with our PUD plan. We continue to exceed the 25% green space requirement. Uh, I would point out that uh, we exceed that requirement um, not only collectively but also in ind each individual phase. So phase one as a standalone meets the 25% green space requirement. Phase two as a standalone meets that requirement. I would also point out that we meet that requirement uh, in spite of the fact that uh, with the three large detention ponds that you see on the plan, those are wet ponds. So we're only getting half credit uh, toward our green space for those, for those ponds. Uh, we also continue to have large buffers on each side of the trace. Obviously with the uh, plan unit development, as you know, central utilities are required and will be provided. Uh, as for the amenities, uh, as I mentioned to you with phase one, uh, with the proximity to the trace, it cutting the development in half, it is a central and focal point for what we're trying to do with regards to the amenities. Uh, we'll have walking paths and an exercise, sta exercise stations along the west side of the trace. We'll also have sidewalks throughout the development that will allow pedestrian access back to the trace. Um, as I noted with phase one, within the commercial sector, uh, of the PUD, we intend to have uses that will benefit from but also complement the trace. Those uses will be turned so that they'll face the trace, they'll be interactive with the trace as opposed to um, office buildings that, that might have the trace behind them. But the types of uses that we're talking about are coffee shops, restaurants, uh, amphitheater, ice cream, snowball places, things that uh, those residents of St. Tammany Parish and visitors here that are on the trace will be able to have a midway point between Mandeville and Abita Springs uh, where they can stop and there'll be services there. While these services will all be open to the general public, obviously we need some rooftops there to support them. And that's one of the reasons that we're pursuing phase two at this time, to try to get uh, the number of units there that will make these types of businesses viable uh, and available for use uh, in this area. The staff also mentioned several comments uh, with regards to the amenities, and I'd like to, uh, to address those. First, it was suggested that seating areas should be provided within the green space near the ponds. We have no objection to that, and we will provide benches uh, in these areas. Next, it was noted that tract CA9, which is one of the large green space tracks, is a good distance from the trace, so it was suggested that perhaps additional amenities should be provided in this area. Um, we have no objection to that. Um, we will have a pocket park and playground uh, that we will construct in that area. Finally, 
it was noted that formal connections to the trace should be on the plan. As you know, part of uh, our ability to access the trace is dependent upon approval uh, from this body. We are in the process of preparing our formal request to enter the trace, uh, where we will present to you where we propose to enter it, how we propose to enter it, and so forth. Based on that hearing and what is ultimately approved by this body, we will update the plan to show those approved locations. Uh, but again, the trace is central to what we're doing here, and, um, but we, we felt like we uh, should come to you formally to request that before we put it on our PUD plan. But, but once approved, whatever is the will of the commission will, uh, will be placed on the plan. So uh, we're, we're trying to build uh, on the positive characteristics uh, of phase one for Cotton Creek. Um, the plan meets the 2025 uh, land use uh, requirements. The staff has recommended approval of both the underlying zoning as well as uh, the PUD overlay. So we would respectfully request your approval this evening uh, of both of these cases, the A4 zoning and uh, the major amendment to the PUD to take in phase two of Cotton Creek. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience want to speak in favor of this case? Anybody want to speak against this case? Yes, sir, please come up and state your name and address and your concerns. My name is Robert Troncoso. <clears throat> I uh, live at 230 Lockmere Drive. I'm the president of the Lockmere Subdivision. It's located just off Sharp Road. A development that's going to, in this uh, development that we're talking about, is north of Lockmere Subdivision. Lockmere Subdivision has one interesting aspect to the subdivision, and that is that Little Creek runs right through it. Um, Little Creek goes north of us and runs along. I've already filled this out. I gave it to the lady over there on the end. In any event, um, based on the staff's um, information, it says that that the drainage, surface drainage of the subdivision is going to be um, uh, uh, detained, but ultimately the ultimate uh, destination of that drainage is Lake Pontchartrain. What it, what's really going to happen is it's going to go down Little Creek to Chinchuba and Chinchuba to the lake. Now. We're not, I'm not, we're not against this development. We're not against any development of this nature. I'm sure it's going to be a fine development. The issue is the infrastructure that's going to accommodate this development, and that's the issue of the parish. What we've been experiencing at Lockmere, and since 1996, was some very, very detrimental um, events, uh, closely uh, detrimental events that have taken place relative to water backing up on Little Creek in 1996 when we had a major flood in the area. In recent times, and I'm talking in the last few months, when we've had a significant rain, the water backs up down south of Lockmere on the other side of Sharp Road. So and once that backs up south of Sharp Road, it backs up into our subdivision. And the water literally stands still. It doesn't move. And it takes a long period of time before that water starts to go down. I guess my issue here is this. If, it's, if a PUD overlay requires you have to have electricity, why isn't it a requirement that we look at the overall infrastructure of a PUD overlay to make sure that the, the arteries that are going to be used to accommodate this drainage because it's coming downhill to us, is sufficient. It, in 2017, I believe it was 2017, I uh, worked with the Public uh, Works Department and uh, Ms. Holly Thomas and, and, and told her about the problems we were having relative to Little Creek and that it was overgrown. There's blockage. It's, it's, it looks like a swamp, basically. Um, they came out, the parish came out and did some clearing. And since then, it's mitigated some of the problems that we've had in the past, which have been good. 
Now the problem seems to be further south of us instead now. Our water is starting to flow pretty good, but it's being blocked up south of us. I don't know what vehicle this is going to take relative to the overall uh, planning of this and approval of the plans for this uh, development. I would just ask that, hey, I, hey, I would like to know what forum will they have for us to, or for me or any others, to express themselves relative to the drainage issue involved here? Because it is an issue. And, and uh, we can say, okay, you know, they're going to have detention ponds and things of that nature. But they're all going to release into that artery. It's ultimately, it's going to happen. And I'm sure they're going to, it's, it's going to be within the parameters that the parish has set forth for that. But even that additional water is going to create a problem. So it's all going to bottleneck eventually, and it's all going to start to back up. Lockmere has 34 homes. The average price of these homes are over $500,000. They pay a substantial amount of taxes. So I would like your, your consideration regarding this. Frankly, I would like for you to, to, to um, defer this matter uh, to allow for some discussion to make sure that we have the adequate plan in place to accommodate this development. Again, we're not against the development. I think the zoning is a little premature in regards to the overall development, but if, you, if, you do, if, it's, if the density is what you all are like and it's what you have planned on your, on your master plan, fine. The only issue I say is, is that can it, can it all be handled properly relative? This is South Louisiana, you know, and, and this is where the, it, the water's gonna go somewhere. And, and, and unfortunately for us, you know, and, and we have our own retention ponds. We maintain our, our retention ponds. We have fountains in our retention ponds to, to, have, uh, to have wildlife and whatever growing in, 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 inside the ponds. So, it, and we've been, we've been good stewards of, of the drainage issues within our subdivision, but we need to just make sure that all this can be handled properly in regards to this artery, because that's where it's going to go. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, my name is uh, Ken Rass, uh, 306 Lakeshore Drive, uh, Mandeville. I live in that subdivision that he just referred to across the road. I live in Audubon Lake subdivision, which is right across and where the Little Creek and Chinchuba meet. Um, so I, I, I understand uh, some of these heavy rains we've had lately, which haven't been really heavy rains by some of the standards we've seen, um, there's definitely backup to attest to his issue. There's houses that ha back up to that, uh, that uh, connection in the two, two waterways. And uh, some of those homeowners have been a little nervous the last few rains. And those haven't been bad rains by some of our standards we've had. But I want to talk about another issue. Um, we're getting, there seems to be a standard of asking, uh, asking for rezoning to A4 on everything in the parish. Uh, there's a right to develop the property. I don't think anybody would ever deny that. But I don't know that there's a right to rezone at all. And we keep rezoning everything to denser populations. And the issue here I want to talk about is when we had this discussion during Brentwood is the traffic issues. Anybody doesn't believe we have traffic issues in this area that hasn't driven or hasn't been to some of the meetings. I've been to two meetings in the last few months, one in Mandeville where they brought in people from the state and local. I was hit one here where the state did a presentation on the I-12. The initial part of the I-12 fix isn't going to be done According to the state guys I talked to, probably for at least five years, the initial part, the complete thing to go to 1077 and connect all of it is probably about a 10-year project. And we keep filling the glass behind all this traffic jam night, day and night. We've got a subdivision in Brentwood, 103 homes getting ready. They're putting the streets in now. They're going to be developing that. Where is it going to go? 59. 
I-12. They ain't getting on I-12, so they're going to come down 59, out down Sharp Road to 59. We've got major development right down the road here on the north side of Dove Park that's underway. We seem to be developing faster than the road system that can handle it. And I think we just continue to create our own problems as far as traffic. I don't understand why we don't wait for some of these fixes to be in to see if they even work. We got the roundabout it, sharp road that everybody will say. I can tell you what, they were back, me just coming here tonight at six o'clock, they were backed up over the trace trying to get through there. And that was with a great majority of people cutting through DeVal, which those people are not very happy about, I'll guarantee you. And people turning around on, making U-turns on Sharp Road because they couldn't get through. And this is six. Everybody that can't get on I-12 is coming down those two roads now. And it continues to get worse and worse. And now we're talking about adding 168 more units that are going to feed one way onto I-59. It just, I hate to say it, just doesn't feel like it makes any sense why we keep doing this. What's the hurry? Why can't we wait to ensure our infrastructure will handle it? You know, it's not the development itself that I have a problem with. I'm not against A4 development. I'm not sure it fits where we're trying to put it in these areas that aren't designed for it originally. And there is no way to put new roads in to speak of. They show on the map Judge Tanner coming through. We had that discussion. Every time we have the discussion with the parish, can't do it, wetlands, can't do it. But on the map, it kind of look, implies Judge Tanner's going to come through all the way. I would like to see that approved be long before we ever would approve this kind of rezoning. So I would just ask you to really, you know, think about this because it, it just <coughs> isn't feeling any better, and it's getting worse by the day. And thank you. Thank you. Is there? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear it. Anyone else? Uh, actually, we're out of time. Sorry. <laughs> I should have said that. We have 10 minutes, and we've already been through the 10-minute period. Uh, we have rebuttal time uh, that I'll, I'll call you back, but let's go ahead and let uh, Mr. Paul. Paul? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a few comments. Uh, good comments from uh, Mr. Troncaso and uh, Mr. Reese, uh, primarily dealing with drainage and traffic, which are always um, legitimate and appropriate concerns. Um, however, uh, while people may not always like the, uh, the procedures or uh, the lineup that the parish regulations provide, um, as you know, they're very detailed. And uh, traffic and drainage have a central point at a certain, process, certain point in this process, and that's in the planning stage. And I think it's important to note that, that you know, the question, well, why would we zone something today when we don't have answers to such important and legitimate questions as traffic and drainage. Well, I think one of the answers there is that zoning doesn't allow you to build anything, right? I mean, zoning just says this is the land use on your property, but it doesn't say that you have the, the ability to go out there and build anything. You can't build that subdivision. The ability to go pull a work order to build that subdivision is dependent upon being able to answer these very critical and legitimate questions about uh, drainage and traffic. So it's a matter of what step are we at in the process. And tonight we're at zoning. Um, and uh, if we are able to move through zoning, then when we are ready to come in for planning, one of the things that we have to do is a detailed uh, drainage and hydrological analysis of the site. That will tell us where our retention ponds exactly need to be. That will tell us exactly where our outfall is. And it may very well be uh, that it goes into Little Creek. I don't, he, the gentleman may, may be right about that. But we don't yet have the hydrology to know that. But once we do have that hydrology, then we've got to account for it. And we've got to demonstrate uh, in the public hearing and to your engineering staff that we can comply with the requirements. And, and that is the forum. He asked the question, well, what is the forum when we'll have a chance to talk about these things? Uh, and that is the forum. That will be the forum where that information is out there. Uh, everybody will have the opportunity to look at that 
and comment on it. And, and we feel like we will be able to address those issues, but we have to get to that step in the process. Likewise with traffic. We also have to have a traffic impact analysis that, that addresses um, the impacts that our development would have. We know that there are issues out on Highway 59 right now. We have commissioned a study that is required by the parish. We hope to have that shortly. But certainly, if and when we come back at planning, those are two of the most central issues. In fact, they are the primary issues, uh, drainage and traffic. And, and we will uh, have data at that time and the opportunity to review that, debate that, and talk about that at that point in time. With regards to A4, uh, that is a legitimate zoning question uh, and zoning comment. And I would respectfully submit to you that A4 in this location um, is not inconsistent or incompatible with what's around it. The current zoning for this part of Phase 2 is A1. A1 re would require five-acre sites. I will tell you, and I think you would agree with me, that historically A1 zoning has been reserved for the northern and more rural parts of the parish. Uh, here we are, um, a stone's throw from I-12, um, and A-4, uh, I would respectfully submit to you, is consistent with the developed tracks that we see in this area. So I think from a zoning standpoint, uh, the proposal that is before you is compatible. Your staff has reviewed it. Uh, the staff has recommended approval of not only the underlying A zone, uh, A-4 zone, A zone, but also the putt overlay. So, with that being said, we would respectfully request your approval of the zoning tonight, the zoning request. But with, with a mind on the issues that have been raised that, that are helpful to us, I think are helpful to you, that will need to be addressed at the planning stage if and when uh, we are ever able to uh, procure a work order and planning approvals. So we thank you for your consideration this evening. Uh, and we would ask for your approval in accordance with the staff's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. For the, for the lady that would like to speak, you have five minutes of rebuttal time. To piggyback on the, to, my name is Joyce Winlow. I live at 150 Glendale Heights on five acres, and I own the next five acres next to it. Glendale Heights, as we well know, um, and Rocker Road, which is the next street to the west, all have large acre tracks. I've been there since 1985. Not to be upset with Lockmere, but we argued in 1990, I guess, when Lockmere was going to be built, that we're going to upset the drainage, and they put in the big culvert and the whatever, and guess what happened in 1996, was it? We flooded, and flooded big time. And ever since then, whenever there's a heavy rain, is will we get water? Our house is raised, but the rest of our buildings are not. When we get water, it sits, just like you talk about. There's no place to go. Regarding traffic, been here since 1985, built the house in 84, put the road in in 84. There was nice old country road, what it was built and designed for. Sharp Road has become, and Dove Park Road have become major nightmares whenever you try to get out, especially at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Infrastructure at planning, really, we've already got the okay to build the the property, and then we've got, oh, then we're going to deal with infrastructure. That's the h horse before the cart, I believe. It's the no, way you put well, it. actually, ma'am, we don't have the okay to build the property. Okay, if yet. you did. when you, If they do. Okay, if you approve this. Got it? I understand. I've seen it. I've lived here. I've worked with it. And it's not working. It's time to deal with the facts. And yes, we have a lot of larger lots, not adjacent to phase one and phase two, but I see the line and I see what's coming next, and it will be adjacent to five, my five acre track, right on the other side of the Clico right away. We're trafficked crazy down there. We are there. You allowed Brentwood to come in and all the other subdivisions. And the traffic is backed up supremely. Anything else you all want to add? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I, I was giving this meeting. But it, we want to make it known and on the record that something needs to be done downstream relative to Little Creek. 
It has to be done. Now, frankly, I don't care what the zoning is, if it's, if it's A4, A3. Whatever it is, if it's going to be A4, that density has to be taken into consideration regarding the artery down in which it's going to drain in. The developer will do whatever he has to do in order to accommodate what the parish requires. But what we're saying is the parish has the burden to create the infrastructure in order to do what they're planning to do. And that's what we, where we are. It's not a matter of a zoning. It's a matter of if it's a master plan, all of it needs to be one. It needs to come together relative to the traffic and everything else. The last thing, relative to Ken's issue of traffic, what we learned from Brentwood was is that <laughs> traffic studies were done during non-peak hours relative to the schools in the area in May. Okay, We need to make sure that when they do the traffic studies, that the traffic studies are done when school's in session so that we know exactly what the impact is because I live on off a of sharp road. If I want to get to the interstate at 2.30 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I will not go up Highway 59 and head north. It'll take me all day because of the schools. So in any event, that needs to be part of the process. When you all look at the overall um, uh, deal relative to traffic, that I hope that the developer would do that study when school is in session, and not in the month of May, but in during the uh, normal months of uh, the school year. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments on the opposition? If not, Paul, you do have some time left if, if you need any more additional time. If not, okay. I'll bring it back to the commission now for review. Commissioners? Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Paul, I have a question. And this question is related more to the, well, first of all, we have phase one. I remember this discussion, phase two. Is there going to be phase threes and fours? I'm looking at the cul-de-sac on here. It looks like you're going to add more potential. There, there is a possibility with the undeveloped land that surrounds it that, uh, that there is a possibility there would be more, but the, the, ultimately the market will dictate in the ability to, uh, to acquire other property. When we have to, well, right now that, that puts us at about 300 cars or so crossing the, the trace twice a day. Is that about right? How does that work when you cross the trace? How's, I know we're going to get into a right-of-way uh, question later. Um, is there other subdivisions of this size and magnitude crossing the trace? I only know, only know north of this. <laughs> I haven't driven that far south on my bike. Because it... it, it yeah, I'm not... Um, I can't think of another development offhand that would, that would uh, cross the trace quite like this would. Meadowbrook's? Meadowbrook? Pelican Athletic Club? Yeah, yeah, Meadowbrook. Well, it, it might be, and I, I didn't Portion, mean to put you yes. on the spot on that. It's, it's just a, it's, it's a bit concerning. Um, no, it's a bit concerning, but I guess there's a provision for that. I assume that would be some sort of a stop sign scenario where bikers and pedestrians wouldn't get killed by the 300 cars going back and forth well, over it. Part of the entering the trace, we would have to, uh, we would have to address that. Uh, and work with staff and ultimately present a proposal to you on, on that crossing. That, that's pretty much my comments, I mean my, my questions. I'm, I'm going to make a quick comment and I'm going to turn it over to some of the other commissioners. You know, if I had my druthers, I'd, I'd, I'd stop. <laughs> I'd just stop it because you're right about the infrastructure. It's, but it's very difficult for us when, when a, a landowner has owns property and wants to put it in commerce, and they follow all of our rules and regulations. That said, drainage and traffic are the number one issues. We all know it. We all live here. We're citizens just like you. Uh, and it's we've got to address it. I, I question whether all of these developments are going to fill at the same time. It seems like we've got a lot of capacity. But is their right to, to, to develop this? Um, 
the drainage and downstream. I love the, the fact that we're even talking about it. I know the staff does it, but as commissioners, we look at things individually. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that we have master plan drainage and we have to rely on engineers to tell us that it's gonna actually work uh, as designed. The concepts of the PUDs are great. Um, you know, density is not a bad word, but but when you look at it all collectively instead of individually, it does raise some concerns. So recognize that uh, all of us sitting here uh, at times are gritting our teeth because, yeah, we, we have the same concern, uh, but we're faced with rules and regulations and developers who are following those rules and regulations. And I agree, it's up to the parish to make sure uh, that we get it right because we're setting the rules or, or us collectively are setting the rules. So. Uh, that's my only comment. I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to some other commissioners. Commissioner Casabon. Yes, um, some of my concern is uh, the fact that when we um, came up with the idea of the planning and development, it had some desirable aspects, and the one that I really liked and felt comfortable with was the fact that um, the number of lots was set. Um, the areas. Now, we do have made amendments to the PUD, to lot lines and things like this, but I have to say this is the uh, largest amendment with adding um, another, well, a, an additional 85 new single-family homes, and it seems like to accommodate that, we would need to rezone it to an A4, whether there is A4 in that area or not. I just feel uncomfortable, and you can say the density is it's within you know the dis density, and I just I don't I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't feel comfortable with uh, looking at new puds and say this is the, the set number of lots and this is the green space and this and this um, when we can come back and add um, 85 more you know, homes to that particular PUD. So I'm a little uncomfortable about the size of it and adding it and the fact that it's by the trace. Um, I have a question for staff engineering that uh, do we still have the drainage model that we plug all this stuff in and we see where it runs to and how fast it gets out and stuff or uh, do we still have that drainage model? Yes, and the exercise will be done and now the but Don't only require. after we plug in the, it, we would have to rezone this to plug it in 85 more new homes at A4 before we have that information, correct? Correct. The first phase is the approval of the zoning. And that um, I just feel uncomfortable with adding this many more homes to uh, the, this existing PUD. And I'll hear the rest of my commissioners have to say. Okay. Any other commissioners' comments? Please. Commissioner Tardy. Well, we've got to do something with it, either deny it uh, or uh, approve it. And if we approve it, that takes us to the next phase, which is the planning phase. And once we get into the planning phase, then we will see uh, the drainage plans and we'll see the traffic uh, studies uh, and all the things that basically have come up for, with questions tonight. I do have some concerns about how this traffic is going to cross the trace. Who's going to have the right of way? Is it going to be the people on the trace or is it going to be the people on the uh, Cotton Creek Drive? That's, that's a real concern because there's going to be times, especially during the summer, uh, spring, fall, summer, where we're going to see a lot of uh, traffic on the trace as far as bicyclers, skaters, whatever. And those people have to be in a safe environment when they cross where Cotton Creek Drive is. As far as the drainage, uh, I'm relatively sure you're aware that the parish has a 25% reduction from what the, the runoff is today. Uh, they have to retain 25%. So that, that in itself helps as far as what happens downstream from Little Creek. 
um, of call to engineering uh, and public works would be uh, what needs to happen. And then I would think, maybe, uh, Helen, is that something that, that you can initiate a call to them and let them know that we had citizens here tonight and ask them to, to look downstream from Little Creek into where it goes into Chinchuba? Well, I do not have an issue with bringing up any complaints or concern to the engineering department. However, I may have to obtain more information to be able to have a clear idea as to you know, the, the complaint is or the yeah, concern is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just something that we've got a, uh, a stream there, and the, the gentleman, as I understood it, uh, where Little Creek goes into Chinchuba is where the uh, area is being blocked right now. And to me, that's sufficient information. And if you'll just make the call and, and uh, to the gentleman that, that brought it up, uh, Helen will make the call, but I would suggest uh, within a couple of weeks you follow up with the engineering group uh, so that we know it's moving along. With all that said, I'm going to put a motion on the floor to approve uh, the zoning and the PUD, but we're going to have to vote on these separately. I have a motion to approve the first case by Commissioner Doherty. Commissioner Drum. Thank you. Um, Paul. I'm a little behind on everything this evening, and I, I apologize for my actions and words, but has any of this already started to be uh, planned out? Uh, no, it, no, nothing's, nothing's there? No, nothing's there. Okay, so this road that's going to go into this PUD mm -hmm. is going to cross both the creek and the trace with uh, industrial trucks and things like that, correct, to build this? It, it's going to cross the trace, but I, I don't believe the road, as is laid out here, crosses the creek, no. Thank okay, you. so all that's going to be, um, so right now, as far as I know, the trace has the right-of-way of any traffic that goes through there. I believe that's correct, yes. Okay, and so, okay, I was just trying to get that yes. in my head. Uh, right. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mr. Drum, any further comment? Sorry, I'm, I'm done. I apologize. You're done? Yes, I have a mo I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Darty. Any more discussion? Need a second. I need a second. Commissioner Fitzmorris. I have a second by Commissioner Force Fitzmorris. Do we have any other discussion? Commissioner Drum. I was looking up here on the paperwork. It says date 425, 2018. Does that need to be corrected? Top left hand on the uh, item uh, 1188. No. But That's just a typo. I, no, I, I can explain. So we took the original request that was approved in 2018 re-advertised it and added acreage as well as the major amendment to the pot. Okay, it just happened to work out. It's the same case that we had and we added to it. Okay. Because it's the pot overlay. It just so it's an amendment of the previously approved case, so it kept it the same case number. Okay. Because the next one says... 425 2019 so I was kind of thinking it might have been a misprint. Thank you. I have a motion. Oh, Commissioner Drum, a uh, Lauren, excuse me. Yes, <clears throat> just as information for those in the audience, a lot of times people in the audience don't really understand the rules that we play by. <clears throat> and one of the rules that we have and you have is that no matter how the vote goes on this motion, whether it's a 
approved or disapproved, you have the right to come up here to the counter if you object to that, whichever way it goes, and file an appeal. And that's your right. Okay? Just as information. Any more discussion? If not, I have a motion by Commissioner Doherty and a second by Commissioner Fitzmorris to approve case number one, 2018-1188-ZC. Please vote. The motion to approve is passed. Motion to approve is passed. The second case, which we already discussed, is 2019-1383-ZC. This is, again, the existing zoning A1 to A4. Staff, do you have any additional comments to make on this? Paul, do you have anything you'd like to address? Is there anybody in the audience want to continue with this discussion on this matter as well, since it's the same I subject? One question. Sure. I, I listen really you name it, address it again, please. My name's Ken Ress, 306 Lakeshore Drive. I mean, I, I understand what everybody's saying, this is zoning, but our experience has been once that ball starts rolling, it's going. And I don't understand why we think there's an automatic right to a zoning change. The developer has done nothing to prove that this property is not developable under something of a much lesser context. He's had to prove nothing that he can't afford to develop it at A2 which is one per acre, I believe, okay? Maybe a, a one per five is not, but how do we know that it can't be developed economically without going all the way to A4? So when you're approving these zonings to go right to A4, there's been no burden on the developer to prove that he can't develop it economically and at a profit at something less. And that question never comes up, not once. We just automatically go from A1, A2, automatically to A4 and say, well, that's just because there's some around that's A4. But it takes into none of the other considerations. And when you say that's part of planning, I, don't, I, I disagree. I think it's all together. I understand your burden, and I, 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 I under, completely understand where your difficulty is. But that question never comes up from, I've never heard it once in a meeting yet where somebody said, why can't you develop it at A2? Why can't you develop it at something less? We automatically just go right to the A4. And they don't have a right to A4. They have a right to develop the property, true. But they don't have a right to A4. And we keep just giving it. And I don't understand. I, 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 I'm sorry, but I just, I, I've tried to grasp. I've been to many meetings in here. And it just continues to be the same answer. We have to. I understand you're, you're, you've got certain rules. But I don't understand where that rule is that says you have to approve A4 because they asked for it. I haven't read that rule anywhere. They have the right to ask, and you have the right to consider. But that doesn't mean you have to approve it. I don't understand why you think you have to approve. I'd have to see that in writing where it says you have to approve. I'm so, thank, thank you. you. Yes, Paul. I'd like to respond to that. Um, okay. yeah, even though we went through this in some detail uh, when the cases were heard together. Uh, but I would respectfully submit to you that uh, economic incompatibility to development is not the criteria by which you make decisions. Now, I am not obligated to get up here and demonstrate to you that I cannot develop it under A1. However, I could. <laughs> if, if that's where we want to go with it, if you want me to lay out the figures for you of developing five-acre sites or three-acre sites or two-acre sites or one-acre site, I can do that. But I've been told many times that that's not the issue before this council or this commission. Many times in the last 20 years. The reason that the question comes up of what's around it is because it is an issue of compatibility. It is a question of consistency. And so when we look at the developments that have been done in recent vintage in and around this area, you will see that the densities being proposed here 
are consistent and compatible with those densities. And I would submit to you that that's what you're charged with. You're charged with making decisions that are not arbitrary and that are not capricious. And I believe that to make a decision that is neither arbitrary nor capricious, one of the things that you must look at, that I believe your staff looks at, is compatibility and consistency. This development is compatible and consistent. Are there issues about traffic and are there issues about drainage? Yes, and at the appropriate stage, those will have to be addressed. And, and I would respectfully submit that when the comments were made earlier that when developers meet the requirements, uh, then there is an obligation to approve that. I think that was in response to the many comments about traffic and drainage. But we're not at that step yet. So we would respectfully request your approval of our zoning request this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion? If not, I'll turn this back over to the commission. Commissioner Darty. Mr. Chairman, I'll go ahead and put a motion on the floor to approve the zoning from A1 to A4 on 1383ZC. I have a motion to approve the zoning change from A1 to A4. Commissioner Fitzmorris. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Fitzmorris. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion to approve is passed. Motion to approve is passed. Thank you. For the individuals that came up and had some very good information about this, uh, let me rest assured, when it goes to planning and such, we, we our, especially our engineering group, plays very an important role in drainage and traffic impact analysis. As far as drainings goes, ever since this commission started talking about they have to have a reduction of 25% less runoff after the development is constructed, Realistically, it should be less drainage going to your location than additional drainage. This has to do with engineering controls. With that being said, we'll hear the next case. Case three, 2019-1397 ZC, existing zonings A2. Proposed zoning is public facilities, PF1. Acreage is 1.649 acres. Petitioner St. Genevieve and the owner St. Genevieve, Reverend uh, Jose Ra Raul Lunge. The location is on the east side of St. Genevieve Lane, north of Bayou Liberty, Slidell, Section 42, Township 9 South, Reigns 11 East, Ward 9, District 11, Council District 11. Staff? The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses. Staff does not have any objection to the request considering that the purpose of the PF1 Public Facilities District is to provide for the location of governmental and institutional uses to the public in the area. Also, other parcels of land located in close proximity are currently zoned PF1 Public Facilities District. The staff recommends that the request for a PF1 Public Facilities District designation be approved. Is the petitioner here? Yes, sir. My name is Dan Haggerty. I'm one of the deacons at St. Genevieve. I'm representing Father Roel Lungay. We're requesting that the property be rezoned from A1 to PF1 with a written stipulation into the rezoning if you grant it that would prohibit any cell towers or any cell transmission devices on that property. Okay, so you're actually uh, want to amend... I want to amend the petition amend that would to, prohibit, to prohibit cell tower any or cell any tower. cell transmission equipment on that property. Yeah, I, I see we have a couple of uh, write-ups about people who are I concerned understand. about that. That's why we're making the amendment. Okay, sounds good. Is there anybody in the audience want to speak against this case? How you doing? My name is uh, Lucian Scafidi. I live on the adjacent property next to the uh, church property. Um, we just here to uh, object to the um, rezoning. Um, I know the church just said that they're going to put something in that's going to eliminate cell towers. We would like to know what they plan on doing 
because we were here about three years ago and we went through this whole ordeal again and nobody, you know, we had no outcome. This is the second time we've had to go through this. So I just wanted to submit a uh, petition. This is all the people in our community signed it and it was unanimous. Uh, every single door that my wife went to, every resident was unanimously opposed to the rezoning of this property. And I'm just here speaking for them. We got a lot of elderly people that couldn't come out, but um, that's the main concern, the cell towers. And um, I'd like to know exactly what they plan because the last time we got a lot of dis, a lot of information that wasn't correct. So um, that's that's our main objection. And like I said, that's about 65 um, people in our area. Every home unanimously voted uh, or, or signed a petition against the rezoning. So I'm just here to represent those people that couldn't come. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak against this rezoning case? Yes, sir. Brian Cappy, 32800 CC Road. Uh, I have the property adjacent to this property, 1.3 acres. Uh, I, it's a beautiful area with 100-year-old oak trees, and the property that's in question has a residence on it currently. Uh, it's a residential area, and I would just hate to, to see that area manipulated or changed in any way due to those 100-year-old oak trees. It's a beautiful area, and uh, I wouldn't want it to change in any way. Thank you. Thank you. And is there a... Mark Mc, McGillan, I to speak. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Milliken. I own the adjacent, uh, just under five acres to this property. Um, by Liberty is has been my family's home. They practically put it on a map, and it's a beautiful area. It's a scenic waterway, a scenic byway. Uh, this said property is right across from mine. I mean, I opened my front door, there it is. And I mean, I oppose anything, anything of public facility right across the road from my home and my property. I mean, it, it's, you know, we've heard so many different things that they propose to do here and going to a public facility. I mean, it, it, St. Genevieve owns all kind of public facilities elsewhere in the area, that's fine. We have no objection to that. But this is, this is in our front yards, literally. And we oppose it. We do not want it. Thank you very much for your time and your consideration on this matter. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm Bryce Jones. I'm not a homeowner in Bayou Liberty. However, uh, one of my best friends is an 81-year-old man named Arnie Broussard. He lives about 120 feet from this property, and part of the property actually makes a V and adjoins his property. He's lived quietly and peacefully on his property since 1965 when Hurricane Betsy ran him out of the Ninth Ward. His father lived in the same area. His daughter, his grandson, his great-grandson. And when I look at the PF1 designation, maybe I'm reading something wrong, but we have a quiet residential area here. We have a lot that is of land that is mostly wet. There's a canal from St. Genevieve Lane going all the way back through that property to Bayou Liberty. A uh, large portion of the property is wetland. And then I, I read in our comprehensive zoning ordinance, a PF1, public facilities district, use by right, subject to minimum standards, a post office, 
That fence in Bayou Liberty at this intersection where you cannot access this property from Thompson Road, a funeral parlor, a crematorium, a passenger transportation terminal, churches or temples in excess of 10,000 square feet. You think that that fits? Government offices, a government maintenance facility right in the middle of this quiet, pristine residential area where people have lived not in subdivisions, but in quiet, peaceful residences in a neighborhood. Why spoil it? And the question is, how long will St. Genevieve's own this piece of property? We don't know what their intended use is. I see these other people come before this forum and they have a plan. But all we're doing is making a raw approval. I suggest that that would not be the appropriate response to make not only to the area, but to the people who live there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the gentleman. Give you rebuttal time. Yes, sir. It sounds like the individuals just want to know what, what, you have someone else? what's your idea. No, no, I'm just saying it sounds like from, from listening for us up back here listening, it sounds like they just want to know what's happening on that property. Right. All, all we want to do is be able to put a, a meeting room, um, a classroom. We're not putting any kind of commercial at, uh, enterprise back there at all. St. Genevieve has been in that area for 150 <laughs> years or more. We have a parking lot right across the street on St. Genevieve Lane. We have to rezone it to be able to use it. The stipulation on the cell tower and the cell transmission, I don't know what other assurances that we can give the residents. We're just going to use it as church property. Okay. If, if I need to submit something and write, tell me and I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. With that being said, I'll bring it back to Unless there's anybody else wants to speak against this case. St. Genevieve has uh, a lot of meeting rooms. They have a, a school on Bayou Liberty Road. It's more than adequate for meetings um, and what have you, uh, catechism, educational, religious educational facilities. And I don't see what they would need a third or fourth property adjacent to ours and disrupt our serenity. You know, I mean, it, they have an entire school on Bayou Liberty Road and they have a, a hall, a meeting hall, right there on the premises at St. Genevieve. And how much more do they need? Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Baggert. Yeah, my question was answered. I wanted to know what they were going to do with the property. Um, that's all. Okay. Commissioner Drum. Mr. Haggerty, can I have you up here, please? How many members are there in your church? About 900, uh, 900 individuals. Okay, you have just one service, two services? Oh, no, 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 we have uh, one service on Saturday, three services on Sunday. Okay. Uh, how large is this, how large is the meeting room that you have right now? How many can it hold? Well, the church is one thing. The church is 500, but that's for liturgy. We have a parish hall, which is used for repass, which is used for par uh, parish activities such as um, celebrations at weddings, funerals, and that type of thing. CCD, you know, the, the building down on Thompson Road, we use part of that for St. Vincent de Paul. Another part of that is for um, our 
outreach program, and then the other is for classes. This would be a whole different meeting area. And we, we don't even know in terms of size. I mean, we can't make, put that big of a building in there anyway. It's going to be a small meeting area if we have overflow for it, if we need to have overflow for it. But we own the property, and the way it's zoned right now, we have no way to use it. We're just asking to allow us to be able to use the property. Do you have any plans drawn out or considered no, right we now? Have, we, ha we haven't spent any money on plans because we don't have we don't know that we have the right to use the property. We own the property, but it's zoned residential. And the building up there now is, is a tear down. Okay, would you have to add another parking lot or something like that to this? No, I don't think. The parking lot that is across the street is, it would not be occupied when this building was in use. Okay, so the, the parking lot across the street is part of the church parking lot for the liturgy on the weekends. If we have a meeting on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, that parking lot's empty. There's nobody there. So the parking lot would facilitate whatever we do here. Okay. Um, well, they, these, these gentlemen are stating that it, the serenity, but you only have your services on Saturday and Sunday, or do you have stuff like uh, during the week as, as well? I do, but not in the church. Okay, and where is that then? We have, we have a chapel, and then we have the uh, parish hall, which would have like KC's and St. Vincent's de Paul would have whatever celebrations they would have. Okay, so and, uh, what about traffic? created to go to your services? The traffic would be created on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. In the evenings, we, you're, not, you're not talking about 40 people, max 50, that would attend a meeting, if that. And the parking lot across the street and accommodate more than that easily. We're okay. trying to be a good neighbor. We do not want to be uh, at odds with our neighbors. Most of our neighbors there are our parishioners. Okay. We're very sensitive to where they are. Maybe not as sensitive as, as we were the last time. That's why we put up this thing with a written stipulation that would prohibit cell towers. I don't know what other stipulations we could put into the zoning that would satisfy their concerns. If we're going to do something with the property, then we're not going to sell the property. Someone asks how long will St. Genevieve own the property. The Archdiocese doesn't sell property, not in this area anyway. So I, can't, I don't know how to answer their questions. Um, in the past, we've had people who were against rezoning because they were concerned about what was going to happen if that business or that facility closed down and it was rezoned, and then you could put a, a bar or something on there after it was zoned, just, you know, off the top of my head. Um, would you be willing to sign some type of paper uh, guaranteeing that you wouldn't yeah. Sell it for something? Am I we against can't. that again? Yeah, we, we, we can't. Am I no. opening my mouth again the wrong way? No, you're doing, you're doing the right way, but you, you, the words that are coming out are not correct. <laughs> we, can't, we, can't, we can't insist that this person specifically do something. If this place, if this, excuse me, if this parcel is zoned PF1, the individual can do anything under oh, the no, PF1. No, no, that's not what I'm asking. You're asking for a deed restriction. A deed restriction. Well, again, that, that's what I'm... That again, that, he's going to have to do that with, with the people out in the audience and stuff, and set that up. That's all. We I'm can't. Gonna, I'm, I'm trying to be a good sower and sow no, a no, seed. No, I understand. <laughs> but I think you've given them the message now on that. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yep, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Commissioner Fitzmorris. So, a question I do have: How long has the property been owned by Saint Genevieve? Mm. Do you know? Three years, maybe four. Max. Just three years. So when it was purchased, it was it was had purchased a in a foreclosure. Okay. The um, feds, HUD was involved some kind of way, and the property had been sold three times prior to us buying it. Each time it was sold, obviously the price went up, and then HUD, I think it was HUD, foreclosed on it, and it was by chance. I drove into the property and saw the HUD notice on the front of it, pursued it, ended up buying the property from HUD, gotcha. so that we. What we wanted to do is have that corner, the parking lot, and the church, that whole corner right there. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Commissioner Darty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We had a situation, I won't say probably about a year ago, over on Allen Road with uh, another church where the citizens around it uh, were concerned about 
the church possibly selling it, um, and you know you could do anything that's in CB one uh, or PF one, excuse mm -hmm. me, not CB one, PF one. And at that time, the church uh, put deed restrictions in place that it would remain uh, a church and that uh, something like cell towers would never be constructed on the property. Now, that's something that's beyond this commission's... Uh, you, you all cannot put that in stipulation? Mm -hmm. No. You have no. to do it as a deed restriction. Now, you know, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be up to you if this passes to get that done and, and satisfy the folks that have come up before us. Uh, we also had the crematorium come up on the, the uh, uh, church on Allen Road. And I think there's been, uh, in the process of, a definition being changed uh, to drop the crematorium uh, out of it. So right now, if we approve this, it's going to be up to you and the church to put deed restrictions in place to satisfy what these folks are asking for. It sounds to me like it, it's really what they want to see is St. Genevieve to be there from now on. Which mm -hmm. is fine. It probably will be. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that's up to, to you and the church to do that. Um, so that we can move forward one way or the other, I'm going to put a motion on the floor to approve the PF1. I have a motion uh, to approve the PF1 zoning by Commissioner Doherty. Commissioner Randolph. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Casabon. Yes, um, if you, uh, the audience, if you're aware that whatever we vote on that you have is 10 days uh, it, before it comes to the council, the council ratifies it and puts it into whatever. So I would suggest that in that time period before it would come to the council that you would work on your, you know, talk with the people and their concerns and stuff. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to take my church hat off for a minute. Um, my problem is this pro property was purchased two or three years ago as residential. And in any other situation, we'd probably say that there's no compelling reason to make the change. So uh, while I understand there's a motion on the floor, I, I have a real problem with it. Um, just because it, that's our job. Our job is to protect the neighbors. And again, this property was not commercial. It was not, it's being asked to be rezoned and it was purchased just a few years ago. So I, I, I have a challenge with that. And okay. That property, the Excuse, you, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. So anyway, I'm finished. That'll do. Thank you. Commissioner Randolph. One of the <clears throat> one of the great things about this commission is that we have to take an objective view. And we look at the data that's provided to us and we listen to the presenters, be it the petitioners or those that oppose or the residents or whoever. Um, at this point, we actually digest all of that information and consider not just what's on paper, but we actually try to empathize and identify what if it was our situation. And we appreciate you guys allowing this to, um, this to go through the process because the process is to vote for or against. And that's what we're about to do. And um, the property I'm very familiar with. I'm very familiar with how long St. Genevieve's been there, as well as how long residents has been in that area. Uh, you guys have worked and lived very harmoniously. 
<clears throat> and um, we're going to do whatever's in the best interest that in, in the position where we are as commissioners to provide that and to better facilitate that. Thank you. Okay, any more uh, discussion by the commission? If not, I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Doherty and a second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. The motion to approve is passed. No, sorry. Sorry. I thought you said passed. I thought you said passed. Well, I did. I'm sorry. Okay. The motion, motion to approve is, is, is not passed. It's been denied. Thank you. All right. Case number 24, 2019-411 ZC. The existing zoning is A2, the proposed zoning is A3, one acre. Petitioner and owner is Scariano Properties, LLC, Crib Scariano. Location is on the south side of Brewster Road, west of Grand Oaks Boulevard, being lot B5, Mad Madisonville, Section 17, Township 7 South, Reigns 10 East, Ward 1, District 1, Council District 1. Staff, comments? Oh, hang on a second. Sorry. Hang on. Let's uh, move out quickly and have no more discussion on the previous case, please. Please go out in the hall if you'd like. Thank you. He can do that. He can do that. Now I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Uh, staff, you have comments about case number four? Yes. The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses. Staff does not have any objection to the request, considering that the abutting residential subdivisions to the south and west have similar or higher density than the A3 suburban zoning district. Note that the objective of the request is to allow for the creation of two single-family residential parcel, and staff would like to recommend approval. Okay. Is the petitioner here, please? Come on up. Your name and address, please. Good evening. My name is Craig Scariano. I live at 502 Delta Queen Court, Covington. And I like my property rezoned, which is consistent and compatible with other properties in the area. I have a map here, yeah, we see. which says what I'm saying is Yeah, correct. we have that too. Yes, sir. Um, I've spoken to Mr. Marty Dean, and he told me he was in favor of what I was trying to do. Um, I've received emails from uh, neighbors, stating no objection. I've given those emails to Mrs. Lambert. And um, I've heard this evening um, some issues with traffic in other areas. There's very little traffic um, on, on Brewster Road where, where, where I'm at. And with that said, I appreciate your consideration. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience want to speak against this case or for this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Casabon. Yes, I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Casabon. Commissioner Baggert. I second it. I have a second by Commissioner Baggert. Commissioner Lauren. I have no objection to it, but I have a question, Tom. You and I talked about this earlier today. The council has recently passed a moratorium on rezoning on Brewster Road. It's actually on tentative and preliminary. Pardon? It's actually on approval of tentative and preliminary. Not rezoning. No, Not rezoning. The, one, the one I saw, the, the documentation I saw said planning and zoning. I, and I, I discussed it with Marty 
Saturday. I don't have any problem with, with this request, but I asked him about it, and he said it was like a lightning bolt kind of hit him. He said, you know, he had talked to the gentleman, but he'd forgotten that they had passed the moratorium on on planning and zoning on Brewster Road. So, well, I'd be happy to research it further. However, the research that I did yesterday, or today, showed me that, and if I'm, if I'm mistaken, I sincerely apologize, but it is for approval of preliminary approval and tentative. But if you'd like to postpone it, I'll do some more research. I, I hate to hold the gentleman up. I mean, <clears throat> but by the same token, I don't want us to do something that's counter to what they did. Yes. Mr. Rich, uh, Commissioner Richard. Sure. I mean, it's a rec this is a recommendation, yeah. and, and they'll have an opportunity, Helen, therefore, to then double check, uh, and there'll be no harm, no foul. Correct. Okay. All right. So if we if we yeah. go ahead and, and do approve it, we have a motion and a second, and if we're incorrect, just so the petitioner knows that, uh, the council will be dealing with this next. Okay. Yep. And Thank Pug, you also you also have uh, the right to make a motion uh, to uh, not not to uh, approve. But right now, I have a, any more discussion. I have a motion by Commissioner Casabon with a second. Oh, sorry. I lost my train of thought now. I got a motion by Commissioner Casabon for the rezoning and a second by who? Baggert. By Commissioner Baggert. Please vote. Motion to approve is passed. Thank you. Case 5, 2019-1414-ZC. A4A, single-family resident in a proposed zoning uh, neighborhood commercial one, professional office. Acreage is 8,045 square feet. The petitioner and owner is Laura Roland Guidry. Location is on the south side of LA Highway 36, west of East 3rd Street being a part of Square 66 and 266 Highway 36, Covington, Section 42, Township 6 South, Range 11 East, Ward 2, District 3, Council District 3. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with commercial uses. Staff does not have any objection to the request, considering that the lots to the north and east of the petition property are zoned commercial. The staff recommends that the request for an NC1 professional office district designation be approved. Is the petitioner here to discuss this? Yes, ma'am. I'm putting that property up for sale. And you I'm sorry, your name and address, My name please? is Laura Guidry. And that's my that's uh, your address. Okay, your property. Residence. Okay, um, I'm putting it up for sale, and I felt it would be more desirable as a, uh, an office space. And my uh, neighbor has indicated that she's an attorney and she was interested in it. If I could turn it to an office. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Is there anybody uh, opposed to this uh, zoning? Yes, sir. Your your name and. Address, please. Paul Lewis, 72235 East 3rd Street. I'm against the rezoning in, in this area, which the property at 72235 East 3rd Street. We purchased this property in 2015. It was a shell of a house, overgrown with bushes and weeds, giant pine trees. We got it all cleared out. It was a lot of work. Total renovation of the house, added a second floor, put culverts in for a driveway, looks totally different. We did all this with the intention of living there, residents. I'm Raising sorry, sir. Did you fill out a speaker card? It's right here. Oh. Can you hand that? Helen, can you please grab that speaker card? And, and Thank you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Indeed. We put all this effort into this property. You know, it's a residence, planning on raising a family. Um, you know, it's enough business in the area. I see no need to rezone it. Um, just like I heard in here tonight, maybe somebody bought a property and opened it a, a bar, you know, right there. It's a right of the raid, a right road run right through the property to the back of our yard. You know, it's a, a road right off of 36, and it runs right to that property. I mean, right in our backyard. You know, we're going to be raising a family. We really don't know what it's going to be. So we totally against it. I hope y'all reconsider just leaving it residential. It's houses all around the area. By us getting this property, I don't know if y'all ever seen the property, but you turn on 3rd Street to this side is tore down trailers, woods, everything growed up crazy. The property of what we got, it looked the same. So we revitalized the neighborhood by building this house, adding to it. And, you know, we wanted to stay residential. You know, so I'm against the rezoning. And, um, yeah, thank you for your time and hope okay. y'all consider it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, my name is Sharon Farb. I am the mother of the the petitioner that, um, not the petitioner, but the lady that sent the email saying that she was against it. That's my daughter. And she is the lawyer, but she has no intention of making that property uh, a business. And there's not enough uh, parking area. And if you look at it, there's no, really no parking for a business to be there. And and like he, uh, my son-in-law to be said, it is going to be an access. It is an access road to my daughter's backyard. So if there's a business, we don't know what would be there. So we are against that thing. And I do live in the neighborhood too, but in the back of it. Thank you. Anyone else against the rezoning? Would the individual like any rebuttal time, ma'am? No. Okay. If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. Thank you. Um, Ms. Guidry. Can I? Did you not say that the property you own right now is, there's nothing there, there's a build? There's, no, there's a home, there's a two-bedroom home there. There's a two-bedroom home, is Correct. it? Is someone residing in it no, now? it was my personal residence. And the reason I want to turn it to commercial is the piece right next to me is commercial for an office, and there was an attorney's office there. And I wanted to do the same to mine. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You finished, uh, Commissioner yes. Randolph? Okay, Commissioner Casbon. Yes, I'm <clears throat> familiar with that area on 36. We do have a mixture of a lot of the, the older homes have been turned into uh, businesses, but it's also, uh, as this gentleman said, that people are coming in and revitalizing. So I'm going to make a motion to um, deny. I have a motion to deny by Commissioner Casabon. Commissioner Fitzmorris. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Fitzmorris. Any more discussion? If not, please vote to deny. I'm not saying you can, you have to deny, but please vote on the on the motion to deny. Yes, sir. The motion to deny has passed. Motion to deny has passed. Okay. Seven, 2019 14 16 ZC, existing zoning is A4. Proposed zoning is public facilities district PF1. Acreage is 3820 square feet. The petitioner owner is Lonnie Crawford. The parcel is located on the west side of East 1st Street, south of Tamity Trace, and LA Highway 36 Covington, section 42, Township 6 South, range 11 East, Ward 3, District 2, Council District 2. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses. Staff does not have any compelling reason to recommend approval, considering 
that the surrounding area is proposed to be developed or mostly developed with existing residential development and undeveloped land. Note that the objective of the request is to allow for the placement of a wireless telecommunication tower. Staff recommends that a request for PF1 be denied. Okay. Yes, sir. Your name and address, please. Hi. Uh, good evening. My name is Chip Lyons, 201 St. Charles Avenue, New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm here on behalf of AT&T Wireless. So uh, AT&T uh, has the property under lease and uh, with the hope that we're able to build, uh, construct a cell tower on this particular location. Um, I'm just, I have a Google Earth photo of the area here. Um, this is the property. It is owned A4 currently. A lot of the uh, property of directly across Tammany Trace here is owned industrial. There's other commercial and industrially zoned property in the immediate, in the immediate area. The, the reason that AT&T is wanting to construct a cell tower here is because of exponential growth of cell of data requirements uh, for cell users uh, throughout St. Tammany Parish, throughout this area, throughout the country, really. Um, there are um, more, the cell tower data usage on cell networks is increasing exponentially each year, and the carriers, frankly, are doing everything they can to try and keep up with that. Um, as you know, uh, what used to just be a cell phone, maybe you'd send texts, is now essentially turned into a home entertainment center to watch movies, to do homework, to do shopping. Uh, this particular uh, location would supplement AT&T's coverage in the area, and I'll show you maps that, that show that the increases in coverage. And it also would have capacity for FirstNet, which is a standalone emergency responder system that at and is building throughout the country. So it would also have uh, increased uh, ability for first responders once the system is in place. Um, from uh, just with regard to st uh, statistics on cell usage, um, like I said, cell, cell phones have gone from sort of a extra, from a luxury item, to now really sort of a basic necessity. It's almost like electricity and water. Every day throughout the country, more than 500,000 calls to 911 are made on cellular devices. Um, it's 80% of 911 calls. More than half of those calls from cellular devices come from inside buildings. So if you look at the drawings here, and they may be a little bit hard to pick up, but this is, this is where we're proposing to put the new tower. Blue coverage is basically little, little or no coverage. Green coverage is outdoor coverage. Green is outdoor coverage. Yellow is in car, and then red is, is within a building. So cell phone is a portable computer, but the signal going back and forth is a radio signal. It gets blocked. It only carries so far. There's a network. So these are other AT&T antennas and towers in the area, there's a significant gap right here in terms of coverage and capacity. If, the cell, if this location is approved and goes online, then you've got much better coverage in-house for residences in that area. Um, I think from a carrier's perspective, we certainly don't see, um, we don't see cell, cellular towers being incompatible with, res, with residential coverage. In fact, the reason, th th there's a tension because everyone wants to have cell coverage, but sometimes people don't like having cell towers. But the reason that carriers go near residential areas is because that's where the demand is. That's, those are the people that need, that, need the, um, that need the coverage. With respect to this particular location, the process is, is that, so AT&T has a network, and the, the network engineers through customer complaints and otherwise identify, okay, there's a gap in coverage here we're trying to address. So what they then do is they provide a search ring to the basically the land acquisition people and say, here's the area where we would like you to find land for a new tower if you can. AT&T is not like um, uh, Clico or Entergy. They can't just go take someone's property. They have to get a landowner to agree to lease it to them. The land has to be the right size. It has to be the right topography, and it has to be in the right location. So the search ring for a new tower is usually about a 0.2 mile radius. It's relatively small. AT&T looked at a lot of properties in this area, and just because of either um, lack of interest by property owners, they were doing something else. This was the only um, location that they could find in or near the search ring where they could put a new tower. So we think that the, and, and you know, I've, 
do you know, a good number of these hearings for AT&T, usually we're not going in and asking for a rezoning because that's, it's just an additional burden. Usually we're going some, they, they look at zoning when they select sites. Usually we're going someplace where the zoning allows it. Maybe you have to do a site plan review, which we'd have to do here if we did the zoning change. So it's not AT&T's general practice to just go in and try and do a bunch of rezoning. They try and find something where the tower will work without it. In this instance, unfortunately, we weren't able to do so. I guess our position is that given the size of the property, which is 3,800 square feet, it's a relatively small property, the request was to go from A4 to PF1, which I think was based on discussions with, with parish planning, kind of as a transitional area, transitional zoning. We're not going industrial, which is right across Tammany Trace. We're not going heavier commercial. And frankly, on a, on a property this size, PF, if you go to PF1, I don't think anything else is going to go in there other than a cell phone. So I don't see that there would be significant, you know, you're not going to have a post office, you're not going to have a government office. Really, the, the PF1 is kind of a transitional zoning for a small piece of property in order to allow a cell tower there, subject to site plan review, that would provide both better coverage to residents and to 911 respond, emergency responders uh, if the tower is approved. So that's why we're asking for, for the rezoning in this instance, and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody in the audience want to speak against this or in favor of this? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. I have a question. Sure. Yes, sir. I forgot your name. Oh, Chip Lyons. Thank Lyons? you. Lyons? Yes. Okay. Thank I'm you. sorry. I was getting ready to call you Mr. St. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> um, on your second drawing, mm -hmm. And this is a very, very interesting presentation you made as it relate to the coverage compared to the first uh, drawing at right. the top yeah. and the installation of the, of the tower right. this, with the second drawing and the, the size of the availabil availability mm -hmm. uh, area. How many towers are already on the property? Oh, on, on this? On this piece. Well, so this shows, um, so this is about a, this is probably, I don't know, 10 to 20 mile area, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other, seven other AT&T sites in this whole area, but this is a relatively large area, and what they're trying to do is fill the gap right there. One tower mm -hmm. will provide what size area it, it, well, of it, coverage? It, 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 no, it's a, it's a good question, it, it, and I hate to give you the, the lawyer answer, but it kind of depends because it's sort of it's a couple square miles. It depends on the topography, on how high the tower is, and what the distance is from other towers. It's kind of like it's kind of like Goldilocks in the sense that towers can't be too far away, or else the signal drops. If they're too close, the signal interferes. So in this area, I would say that the the coverage area from this tower, just, I mean, literally just kind of doing an eyeball, is probably a um, three mile radius around the tower where it would provide additional um, cell phone coverage for AT&T. The tower is also gonna be designed to, a, a, in addition to the first net deployment to accommodate up to two other carriers. So once the tower is built, other carriers other carriers could go ahead and locate on that tower, and that's a much easier process for them because the tower's there. They don't have to go through as many approval, uh, the approval process, and the tower's designed to accommodate um, up to three carriers. What's the probability, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. What's the probability, Mr. Lyon, of the request for another tower in that area? I mean, from 18, I can tell you. Because so, there's a lot, the reason why yeah, I'm asking uh -huh. is because there's a lot of more blue area, uh -huh. if you will, right. than the green, yellow, red area. Right. And I'm just curious as to what would be the probability of more towers being requested for that area. Yeah, it's, um, um, that's something I'd probably have to get additional information on because it's hard, just from looking at those maps, it's hard to tell what the, what the population is in those blue areas. And this also is just AT&T, so I don't know um, what Verizon or Sprint or T-Mobile may have in those other areas. From AT&T's perspective, they kind of are dealing, they're 
a, a lot of what they're doing is responding to customer complaints when they start getting calls about, and they can monitor this, but themselves, but when they start getting calls is when they, the momentum essentially builds internally to say, okay, we need to do something to address our customers in this particular area, and that's why they're proposing this tower. If there are other issues, and if, if they're comparable issues in other areas, that usually makes it onto their radar, and, and it's a process to go ahead and get a tower site approved, located, and built, but if there are other areas in the, uh, in the vicinity that have comparable issues, then they, you know, I can bring that to AT&T's attention, and they, and they certainly would look at constructing additional towers if it's required. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Casabon. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, can you tell me, or maybe staff could tell me, uh, we used to know where uh, the closest cell towers were to the, this petitioner's. Um, is there, what would be the closest cell tower to this? Or if he can tell me. What, what we've done in the past is that, uh, um, Mr. Lyons, have you checked into to, um you carrying, you know, AT and T getting on uh, another cell tower that's in the area. Yes, um, sure. So the the the, um, the closest there are. Um, I'm, I'm I think there's I'm, one yeah, I, pretty I close to this site. I'm sorry. I'm there sorry. is one I think pretty close to this site yep. within so I think, the three miles. Yeah. So we they do the the first thing they look at is to co-locate on another tower, and um, if they're in in this instance. They weren't able to. The issues that they that they look at on other towers are both tower height, and does it match up with um, height of other AT and T antennas? Is there capacity on the tower? And um, in, in terms, is there room on the tower? And is there structural capacity on the tower? Um, in this instance, I and I, I took a look at. There's a FCC website that has other towers in the area. I took a look at that. I did not see anything in the immediate vicinity when I took a look. I know that AT&T has other towers. Um, I can take a look But it doesn't again. have to be an AT&T tower. No, it, no, that's right. That, that you could tie on to. Has, has other, has any tower, has all cell towers on there above a certain height. My information, I, so I don't have specific information on other towers in the area, but there is a statement, and AT&T put this into the record, a letter from AT&T saying that they had looked at the possibility of co-locating on other towers, but for they uh, it, it they weren't able to accommodate what AT and T was looking for on those towers. So that's why they're looking to construct a new tower. My concern is that it is right on the trace. Even though I mean, um, if this I don't know what the fellow commissioners are are thinking about, but it would have to be uh, because it is on the trace, um, abutting it. The you know the. Re landscaping would Helen is there required landscaping and buffer and all that kind of I know we fence it but uh, what are the requirements if we did put it this close to the trace well it, this is just the approval of the zoning uh, there are several other processes that we'll have to go through before the tower can be permitted okay. as far as but I mean we do have those in place right yes that if we did, that um, where it is and stuff. But I have a concern with, um, I, I would like to, and the, and the type of pole, it, what type of um, the guide wires, collapsible, yeah. Yeah, what, so what is, type of pole? Sure, so, and yeah, so um, in response to the, to the first question, we still would have to go through the site development plan approval mm -hmm. process yeah. and mm -hmm. comply with all the requirements in the, in the parish um, development code. Mm -hmm. The pole for this location is intended to be a monopole, a single pole, so it's not gonna be the sort of erector set That's type it. construction, okay. it's not gonna be guy wire, it's a monopole. And part of the reason is that monopoles are, you know, they're, they're, they're just less visually obtrusive than right. other designs. And it's collapsible into itself. It doesn't fall over. Cor it is correct. So yeah, the way the way the monopoles are designed is that, and we have a, a, a fall radius letter from an engineer. Essentially, they're designed with a break. With it's kind of like a break point, it, so that it, it, yeah, it goes, so that it kind of tilts yeah. over. It doesn't come down like a tree. Right. It's effectively designed with a 30 foot fall radius. But really, what happens is that it's designed to meet all mm -hmm. the code requirements. But if there's a wind load that exceeds it. Instead of the pole coming down, it just bends over. Right. Is what happens. I d again, um, I understand 
probably know more about these cell towers from years past, but I just, it's just really the location and, and where it is at that point that, um, that I have a problem with it, um, that it is that close to the trace. I'll see what anybody else has to say. Okay. Nobody? Any more comments? I have a comment. Yes. What's the height of the, of the antenna going to be? The proposed uh, tower will be 190 feet. 190 feet, and you're on a 60-foot square piece of parcel. Correct. And and the and the reason, and again, it's um, the towers are designed so that if it if there is some structural issue, it's not going to come down, and we'd have to go through site plan review to make sure if we either meet setbacks or we don't, that we'd have to get waivers for them. I guess I think in terms of the distance from from the trace, the idea is that, you know, there it'll be it'll be screened on the ground, it'll be, you know, meet whatever landscaping requirements the parish has and or supplement it to address um, address staff concerns. Um, I think in terms of the particular location, I'm not sure if the concern is a visual one from the trace or a safety issue in terms of, um, yeah, and I think, you know, visually, I mean, frankly, visually, if you're on the trace and you're riding your bike, you're, you know, if you look up, you'll see it. <laughs> if you don't look up, you'll see the screening, and that, and that's generally what we find when we do photo simulations of new towers is that people in the line of sight in that scenario really aren't looking up. If you do look up, you'd see it. And, and do they, uh, do y'all install generators in the case of a storm um, that it, we have, you know, we, the cell service, uh, is that required? It is required, yes, yeah. I thought it was. It, that you'd have to, um, so, so Helen's shaking her head, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> For those of you that So, didn't so see you them. have a 190 foot antenna going up, and you have a ready, uh, basically, you have an offset of about 30 foot on each side to the property lines, correct? Um, if it's in the middle. Yes, I believe so. I'm gonna. I'd have to double check okay. the the, that's all. the site plan, but I think it, that's about okay. about right. What you think? Nope. I'm gonna see what John. Any? Uh, oh, Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I I uh, I think it's better to have cell service in that area and on the trace, and I move to approve. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Richard. Com Commissioner Fitzmaurice. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Fitzmaurice. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion to approve has passed. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Case eight, 2019-1417 ZC existing zoning A2. And a neighborhood commercial four. Proposed zoning is NC3, NC5, Community Based Facilities District 1, PF2, Public Facilities District, and with a row overlay. It's 121.434 acreage. Petitioner is Jeff Shane. The owner is Gartfield LLC, Grand and Billy G. Sims. Parcel located on the west side of Military Road, north of U.S. Highway 190 East, Slidell, Section 17 and 18, Township 9 South, Range 15 East, Ward 8, District 13, Council District 13. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the northern part of the property to be developed as a planned district with residential uses and conservation areas and the southern half of the property to be maintained as a conservation area for human enjoyment and recreational while preserve, preserving the natural environment of the area. The attached zoning map shows the location of the requested zoning change and the proposed development for each zoning designation and you have a, the, the total acreage as well as a description of what the request is at this time, staff does not have any objection to the request and it meets the objective of the 2025 future land, land use plan by providing some recreational, rec residential, and commercial uses while preserving most of the natural landscape of the site. For that reason, staff would like to recommend approval. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening. Jeff Shane of the Jones Cell Law Firm, uh, PO Box 1810 in Covington. 
Uh, I represent uh, Billy and Grand Sims, who are with me this evening, and their company, Garrett Field LLC, as it relates to the proposed rezoning of this track. Um, I'm happy to say that uh, many of the things you've discussed this evening are not the intended uses as for this property. In fact, I'm not sure uh, that I have brought to you many 120-acre tracks that truly met, at least in my view, the definition of conservation, uh, use of the natural, uh, preservation, uh, and hopefully uh, opportunities for people to enjoy and really extol the virtues of, of the property. Uh, my client's vision obviously is different than many that would be entrepreneurial in that with the beautiful and nice subdivisions that are in the area, it would have been very tempting to suggest that maybe this 120-acre tract uh, be developed into more single-family residential. Um, that's obviously not what this case is all about. Uh, likewise, because of its proximity to Fremo and the development that we all know that has uh, happened at Fremo and I-10 as well as development that's coming, it would be very tempting to maybe suggest that there be a more intense commercial uh, development uh, along Military Road. But I hope you agree with me in looking at the plan uh, that again, these are not the precepts and that's not really what this is all about. Uh, my clients, uh, amongst many other uh, loves of life, uh, truly uh, have a passion for polo. And really this project started with a discussion of how to uh, create uh, a great polo environment, not only for themselves, but for others, those that might come to the area. Uh, if you'll take a look uh, at the uh, plan that we've presented to you. Uh, I hope that you have noticed that uh, the green colors and the zones that they connote, uh, at least one could, could certainly make the argument that approximately 90 of the 120 acres are requested to be zoned what I will call very soft or recreational type uses. And in fact, we've tried to be descriptive and hopefully you've noticed that, that if you look within the zones on the site plan, you'll see some of the suggested uses. Uh, things like horseback riding and trails um, and um, uh, the residential development, which is very modest. In fact, why don't we talk about that? There are two NC3 areas. You'll see that the maximum density suggested is five units uh, per area. And we actually uh, have discussed the possibility of maybe developing some treehouse concepts uh, and other types of interesting abodes that people would want to come to the area, uh, enjoy being uh, in the natural environment, and have an experience that, quite frankly, would be very unique and, and very different. Um, it is our belief that the proposed zones and the uses that we talk about this evening do not present grave problems as it relates to traffic or drainage. And although we realize those are not technically issues before you this evening, we also know that it's always pertinent to think about those things when you're looking at a request for a change in land use. So for the most part, the property remains as is. Yes, it will be cultivated. Yes, there are some areas, as you can see, that will have an NC5 zone along Military Road, which will provide some opportunity for some commerce, for some people to gather. But again, we think uh, it is a unique blend that again will not only be um, appropriate as it relates to the development of this track, but equally importantly, it will be appropriate, compatible, and consistent with the development we see in that area, in that corridor. Um, so with those initial comments, I'd like to reserve any other time that I may have. We ask, though, that you consider uh, making a recommendation to the council uh, for the four zones that we seek this evening, and I look forward to answering your questions at the appropriate time tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Is there anybody who would like in the audience like to speak in favor of this zoning request change, or anybody who would like to speak against? Teresa Crawford, 747 South Military Road in Slidell. You can lower your... There you go. Um, I, 
I just wanted, I guess, wanted to, because my house go right up to their house. I just wanted to know what facility I didn't get that paper um, that y'all had got to see which one is um, property that they're using. Is this the old one, the old house? I have no problem with it. But if it's their house, I mean, if they're using their house, it's right next up to my house. Um, and I don't want a bar or, like they say, a public place um, right next to my house. Um, that is basically my main concern. Because, um, you know, um, other than that, hey, it sounds like this would be a nice place. I would like to make a reservation. <laughs> uh, other than, you know, but um, just, to, you know, how, you know, where it's going to be. If it's going to be, you know, I, you know, like I don't want a bar next to me. Um, you know, and that's, I guess that's my main concern. Okay. Is there anybody else want to speak uh, on this case? If not, Mr. Shane can answer your question, I hope. Okay. Mr. Shane? Is it okay if I come back to the podium? Sure, go ahead. I thought it would be yes. helpful if I yeah. asked you. So we can well, no, rest your mind. Right. Okay. Which you haven't had yeah. the benefit yeah. of. Yeah. So my guess is you live right here next to the sentence, is that right? Uh -huh. Well, you'll see that this area is still gonna be a personal residence, okay. not gonna be a bar. None of this zoning would allow for a bar right. or a tavern, uh, anything of that nature. The only thing that's been suggested as a possibility would be maybe a spa, or, or perhaps the home could be rented, mm -hmm. but not developed into a bar room or something okay. intense. All around you would be this green area, which you can see for the most part remains, it says rustic overlook. Okay. Does that help? Uh -huh. yes, Thank you, yes, Mr. Okay. Shane. I appreciate that. I hope y'all didn't mind me taking that liberty, but it seemed to no, be No, no, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. She has good questions and good concerns, and this is one time yes. I think the firemen had the right amount of water to put it out. Right. Is there anyone else want to speak uh, either in favor or against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. Yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Chairman. When I was reviewing our packet, and I saw this. Um, I said, wow, what a, what a refreshing new idea to come into the area and to bring a little more lift into that area as well. I um, appreciate that very much. And being that Ms. Crawford was satisfied as being uh, the first to receive her reservation, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the four zoning the rezoning the four rezoning i have a motion to approve by commissioner randolph commissioner fitzmorris i too applaud this type of development and i'll second the motion i have a second by commissioner fitzmorris any more discussion if not please vote to approve his pass. It's passed. Thank you. Thank you. Case 9, 2019-14-18 ZC, Existing Zonings Highway Commercial 2. Proposed zoning is A4A. It encompasses 1.12 acres. The petitioner is Tina Vernado. The owner is Frank Bell. Excuse me. The parcel is located on the north side of U.S. Highway 190 East on the east side of Panther Street and on the west side of North Shore Lane being lots 12 to 25, Beverly Heights Manor, Slidell, Section 13, Township 9 South Reigns, 14 East, Ward 8, District 13, Council District 13. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses. Staff does not have any objection to the request. I would like to note that the site is proposed to be developed with single family residences and staff is in favor of the request. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Yes, sir. Your name and address, please. Austin Varnado, 2009 Sunset Boulevard. Um, this land originally, about 50% of it was residential. The owner Got it rezoned commercial, and we're just wanting to go back residential and put some, some houses in. It's in the front of Beverly Heights subdivision. 
so there's you know all houses surrounding it okay is anybody in the audience want to speak in favor of this case or against this case if not i'll bring it back to the commission commissioner baggart I have a question. When I, when I look at the site, and I'm very familiar with it, all these lots that you rezone and they face in uh, Highway 190, right? Uh, no, sir. You'll have three facing uh, Panther and three facing North Shore Drive. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm no, looking at the wrong one. I'm sorry. I'm There'll looking at the wrong on, ones. Okay. Three on each side. I was looking at that front section. Okay. I have no problem. I'd like to make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Baggert. Commissioner Lauren. I'll second it. I have a second by Commissioner Lauren. Commissioner Darty. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused uh, because it says being lots 12 through 25. And what I'm seeing on the drawing is that there's uh, lots 16 through 23 that abut Highway 190, and there's no uh, access to those lots except Highway 190. I, I can clarify this. Okay. Thank you. Lots 16, well, I'm, I'm going to refer to the discussion that I had with Mr. Bernardo, is that lot 16 to 23, you know, it will go through a, resub, a resubdivision and the lots will be reoriented towards Panthers and towards North Shore Lane. Okay. So they will be they will be accessed through North Shore Lane and through Panthers Road or Panthers Street. Okay. So there will be no access uh, to 190 from these lots. Well, unless if Mr. Vernado would like to correct my statement, no, no, but if I'm correct. not mistaken, so lots 12 through 23 that you see here. Yeah. That that was the original Beverly Heights subdivision. If you see it says lot 23A 1.2, that's where you got it all rezoned back commercial and it's one parcel now. Those smaller lots were the original zoning when they built Beverly Heights subdivision. Okay. So what I want to do is take this 23A lot, divide it into six separate lots, three facing Panther, three facing North Shore. You're correct, Miss Helen. None will face 190 at all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any more discussion? Well, I'm, I'm confused. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Is it say 23 only? No, no. Oh, okay. I got it. You still got to do a resub. And access, yeah, access will be coming from either Panther or North Shore Lane. Yes, sir. No, no road will come off of 190. Okay. Just a map we're looking at. Yeah, the map yeah, is it's very got, confusing. It's got the original lots in right. the 23A. Okay. Okay. I have a motion. Yeah, I have a motion to approve by Commissioner ba Baggert, and I had a second by Mr. Commissioner Moore. Fitzmorris. No. Or was it Commissioner Lauren. Commissioner Lauren? Yes. Commissioner Lauren, you made a second. Okay. With a second by Commissioner uh, Lauren, please vote. Motion to approve has passed. It's passed. Thank you. Okay, case 11 is 2019 1420ZC, existing zoning is A5, two family residential. Proposed zoning is Neighborhood Commercial 2, indoor retail and service district. It's 5,130 foot square foot. The petition owner is Grand Homes LLC, J. J. Plu. The location is on the west side of 11th Street, south of LaSalle Street, being lot 2, square 30, Chinchuba sub subdivision in Mandeville, section 34, township 7 south, range 11 east, ward 4, district 4, council district 4. Staff, comments? Mr. Chairman, did we skip? Yes. Four, skipped. 1419? Did I skip yes. one? Yes. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. sorry. I'll just read. Yeah, I'll just read. I'm sorry. I thought we postponed that one. Go ahead. The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with commercial uses 
Staff does not have any objection to the request. Um, the site is currently occupied with a retail office building, and the objective of the request uh, zoning change is to bring the existing use in compliance with the appropriate zoning. It was zoned commercial before the comprehensive rezoning, so the owner is, is here to just bring it back to the appropriate zoning district. Thank you. Yes, sir, your name and address, please. J. Plew, 417 Marina Oaks Drive, Mandeville. Okay. And uh, this is a small office building, and as Helen said, it was zoned commercial when I built it. I had to get a commercial uh, license. It was built according to the fire marshal with handicapped bathrooms, and for some reason, the parish with the rezoning took it away and made it uh, A5. So I'm here now to get it back to its sure. original zoning. And and we knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know what it... You Not know, your I, case specifically, though, yeah. okay? There's a lot of years that went by. Sure. That I, didn't, I just didn't do anything yeah. about it. But uh, I have some interest now. Someone wants to buy it. And he said, well, it's not commercial. And then uh, Ms. Lambert told me that if the property sat vacant for six months or uh, it, it was destroyed by a hurricane, I couldn't go back as commercial. So that's the reason for this. That's correct. Right. Now. Okay. Is yeah. there anybody in the audience who want to speak in favor of this case or against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Baggert. I'll move to approve. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Baggert. Commissioner Fitzmorris. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Fitzmorris. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. The motion to approve has passed. It's approved. Thank you. Now I'll go back to 10, sorry. 2019-1419 ZC, the existing zoning is Highway Commercial 1, proposed zoning is Highway Commercial 3. It's one, I'm sorry, I wrote all over this, 1.68 acres. The petitioner is Adams and Reese LLP, Marshall A. Hevron. The owner is RMLC Enterprises LLC, Christine Riviere, Richard Riviere, Lisa Riviere, location is on the southeast corner of LA Highway 22 and, and Trapanje Road, Madisonville, Section 42, Township 7 South, Range 10 East, Ward 1, District 4, Council District 4. Staff? The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses. Considering that the property is already zoned HC1 and abutting single family residences on the south, along Trapani Road. Staff feels that there's no compelling reason to increase the intensity of the commercial zoning in the area. At this time, staff would like to recommend denial. Yes, sir, your name and address, please. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Marshall Havron, 701 Poitier Street. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of my client, River Parish's property. River Parishes is a subsidiary of River Parish's holding company, and we do have a representative of the company, Aaron Holmes, with us here tonight. As we indicate in our application, my client is under contract to purchase this property at the intersection of Trapania Road and Highway 22, and they intend to invest $1.7 million into a gas station for this site. Um, this will be the, as I understand it, the only service station on Highway 22 in between Madisonville and the Parish Line. Um, this is an increasingly busy stretch of highway. In 2012, the DOTD reported that the average daily, daily traffic count was a little over 6,000 cars per day. In 2018, that count was at almost 13,000 cars per day. Given the high rate of traffic and the lack of any fuel facilities, there's a clear need for a new gas station. The current zoning designation for this property is HC1. My client intends to, as I said before, my client intends to invest almost $1.7 million into this project. In order to make it work financially, he will need to install eight pumps. HC3 is the only zoning designation that will allow for this. Uh, HC2, which is a less intensive designation, would have a limit of four pumps on the site, and financially this would not work for my client. While we see a clear need for a gas station in this area, we are mindful of the fact that the planning staff has recommended this application be denied. We respectfully disagree with the planning staff on a few key points. First, while the planning staff points to the future residential na nature of this area, it does not take into account the need for a gas station due to the increased traffic. Second, the staff fails to note the high number of more intensive commercial uses in close proximity to the site. 
There are a number of HC2 parcels in a short distance from this site. And most importantly, the site across the street, according to the parish zoning map, is zoned at HC3, which is the same zoning designation that we're taking. There was reference also to the uh, abutting residential on Trapania Road. The, um, now, this wasn't noted in our application, but the property owner of the abutting property is here tonight, and they are in support of this. Um, I, I want to not just talk also, uh, I, I don't want to just talk tonight about the need for this. I also want to tell you a little bit about my client and why we feel like this would be a, a good fit for this property. Um, my client has been in business since 1955. They're going into their 60th year of business next year. There aren't a lot of family-owned businesses that go that, that, go that long. Um, they operate 13 gas stations throughout southeast Louisiana, the closest being in Ponchatoula. They have a great reputation for doing quality work. I actually want to distribute. I've got a photo here of their Ponchatoula station, and the design for, uh, for this site will be done by the same architect, and it will keep in their same standards of a high quality facility. So uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, we thank you for your time and we are willing to answer any questions that y'all may have. Okay. Is there anybody would like to, any audience want to speak in favor of this zoning request? Yes, sir. Your name and address, please. My name is, my name is Joe Moore with Remax Commercial out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I represent the sellers, also the buyer of this property. And I want to give the uh, commission a little background on the long nature that we had in so finding a site this well suited for a C store in this location. We've been searching in this area for four years. The property was under secession, or we would have come to you three or four years ago. There's very few properties that had HC1 zoning, but we knew all along that at some point we would be here before you tonight. Uh, the reason for a station in this particular location. A new modern station is very simple. We have a lot of hurricanes, a lot of flooding, a lot of um, uh, downtime in the areas when there's a ca catastrophic event from a storm. Uh, similar things have happened in other areas where they have stations. Uh, I live down at the Diversion Canal on Lake Maurepas, between there and Livingston on Highway 22. In the last five years, we've done three similar developments. All of them are five to six miles apart. Had we not had those stations in place when the big flood of 2016 came into play with generator backup for the gas, the people in the area, thousands and thousands of homes like the ones here, would not have had a place to get groceries or gas during those storm events. That's why we picked this site, because it's strategically located, and it's on the going-to-work side of the highway, so it will not create a traffic jam on Highway 22. Thank you. Anybody else in the Audience want to speak in favor? Richard Rubier, 125 Chapinet Road. I own the property Jonet South, and I have no problem. And I have talked to my neighbors, and they're not here, so they said they had no problem with it. Thank you, sir. Okay, anybody in the audience want to speak against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission for discussion. Commissioner Fitchmores. Yes. I just want to make the commission aware, as well as Mr. Heveron and his group, the reason that the property across the street is HC3 is because we just approved that zoning, I don't know, six months ago, four months ago, for a fueling station. Um, and some of the same things you said, how many pumps, so on and so forth, how big it had to be. So I just want to make the commission aware of that, that we just we recently did it. Um, in that location, and that, I believe, is in process of planning or getting ready to go through with that group. So just to make you aware. Thank you. Commissioner Randolph. Motion to approve. Commissioner Randolph makes a motion to approve. I'll second. Who's that? Richard. Commissioner Richard uh, made a second. Commissioner... Commissioner Richard makes the second to approve. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. That's correct. Motion to approve is passed. 
All right, I have a motion to approve. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay. Plan review cases, applications requiring review and approval of site plans along a plan district by the Zoning Commission are as follows. Number one, PR 17-12002, use revised site and landscape plan for retail center. The corridor is the Highway 21 plan corridor overlay. Zoning is Highway Commercial 2. The use is 48... Did we need to do this? Oh, I'm sorry. No wonder I circled all this. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Any old business? Except losing my memory. Any new business? My sugar is low. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved.